Would y'all stand with me in prayer, please? In this manner, therefore we pray. Our Father, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we do forgive others. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For everything, there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to harvest a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build up, a time to cry, and a time to laugh, a time to grieve, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to turn away, a time to search, and a time to quit searching, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be quiet, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What do people really get for all their hard work? I have seen the burden God has placed on us all, yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart, but even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. So I concluded, there is nothing better than to be happy and enjoying ourselves as long as we can, and people should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of their labor, for these are gifts from God. And I know that whatever God does is final. Nothing can be added to it or taken from it. God's purpose is that people should fear him. What is happening now has happened before, and what will happen in the future has happened before, because God makes the same things happen over and over again. I also noticed that under the sun, there is evil in the courtroom. Yes, even the courts of law are corrupt. I said to myself, in due season, God will judge everyone, both good and bad, for all their deeds. I also thought about the human condition how God proves to people that they are like animals. For people and animals share the same fate, both breathe and both must die. So people have no real advantage over the animals. How meaningless. Both go to the same place. They come from dust and they return to dust. For who can prove that the human spirit goes up and the spirit of animals goes down into the earth? So I saw that there is nothing better for people than to be happy in their work. That is our lot in life. And no one can bring us back to see what happens after we die.
Again, I observed all the oppression that takes place under the sun. I saw the tears of the oppressed with no one to comfort them. The oppressors have great power and their victims are helpless. So I concluded that the dead are better off than the living. But most fortunate of all are those who are not yet born. For they have not yet seen all the evil that is done under the sun. Then I observed that most people are motivated to success because they envy their neighbors. But this, too, is meaningless, like chasing the wind. Fools fold their idle hands, leading them to ruin. And yet, better to have one handful with quietness than two handfuls with hard work and chasing the wind. I observed yet another example of something meaningless under the sun. This is the case of a man who is all alone, without a child, or without a brother, yet who works hard to gain as much wealth as he can. But then he asks himself, who am I working for? Why am I giving up so much pleasure now? It is also meaningless and depressing. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. It is better to be a poor but wise youth than an old and foolish king who refuses all advice. Such a youth could rise from poverty and succeed. He might even become king, though he has been in prison. But then everyone rushes to the side of yet another youth who replaces him. Endless crowds stand around him. But then another generation grows up and rejects him too. So it is all meaningless, like chasing the wind. As you enter the house of God, keep your ears open and your mouth shut. It is evil to make mindless offerings to God. Don't make rash promises. And don't be hasty in bringing matters before God. After all, God is in heaven, and you are here on earth, so let your words be few. Too much activity gives you restless dreams. Too many words make you a fool. When you make a promise to God, don't delay in following through. For God takes no pleasure in fools. Keep all the promises you make to him. It is better to say nothing than to make a promise and not keep it. Don't let your mouth make you sin. And don't defend yourself by telling the temple messenger that the promise you made was a mistake. 
that would make God angry. And he might wipe out everything you have achieved. Talk is cheap. Like daydreams and other useless activities. Fear God instead. Don't be surprised if you see a poor person being oppressed by the powerful and if justice is being miscarried throughout the land. For every official is under orders from higher up and matters of justice get lost in red tape and bureaucracy. Even the king milks the land for his own profit. Those who love money will never have enough. How meaningless to think that wealth brings true happiness. The more you have, the more people come to help you spend it. So what good is wealth? Except, perhaps, to watch it slip through your fingers. People who work hard sleep well whether they eat little or much. But the rich seldom get a good night's sleep. There is another serious problem I have seen under the sun. Hoarding riches harms the saver. Money is put into risky investments that turn sour and everything is lost. In the end, there is nothing left to pass on to one's children. We all come to the end of our lives as naked and empty-handed as on the day we were born. We cannot take our riches with us. And this, too, is a very serious problem. People leave this world no better off than when they came. All their hard work is for nothing, like working for the wind. Throughout their lives, they live under a cloud, frustrated, discouraged, and angry. Even so, I have noticed one thing, at least that is good. It is good for people to eat, drink, and enjoy their work under the sun during this short life God has given them. And to accept their lot in life. And it is a good thing to receive wealth from God and the good health to enjoy it. To enjoy your work and accept your lot in life. This is indeed a gift from God. God keeps such people so busy enjoying life that they take no time to broad over the past. That was from Solomon. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. So a preacher's job is to explain the Word of God. Sometimes, most times, the Word of God doesn't need any explaining. It just needs to be read. Let the Holy Spirit talk to you. Let Him work with you. Let Him fix you. Because we're all broken people. Yeah, all have our faults. We all fall short. Next couple of weeks, we're going to read some more scripture. <clears throat> we may not even make it till 11:30 because it's only 10 after right now. But that's that's okay. We don't need a time limit on church. Do we? Sometimes we go long. Sometimes we go short. The most important thing is for God to speak to each and every one of us. I would encourage you this week pull your copy of scripture out. And reread Ecclesiastes chapter 3 through chapter 5. There are so many truths that apply to us today. 
And remember, it's not the preacher saying it. It's God saying it. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much. We thank you for your word that we that we neglect. That we don't take to heart, that we don't memorize. But Lord, my prayer is always for you to set me aside and for you to speak. And so I guess that's the reason you've give us, given us these, this uh, sermon series of just readings. So my mouth is silent and yours is heard loud. Lord, there's uh, some cross-culture members that are traveling today. I think uh, especially with Tom and Gary that headed south for Florida. I pray that you keep them. That they would find comfort in the church they go to down there and that you'll bring them back to us safely. We also pray for Pam and Dan as they're fixing to go to Alabama that you will give them traveling safeties. And that they will find peace in the short time that they're down there. Lord, we pray for um, the wedding that has happened and the upcoming weddings, Lord. You are moving in our, in our church. You're moving with our people. Some of us struggle to get here. Some of us can't wait to get here. But Lord, I pray that we each find what we need when we do get here. And that that will carry us through the week. Not that we're starved for your attention all week, but that we cultivate the relationship that we have with you. That we focus on you. That we read your word. That we pray that our sins diminish and our holiness increases. I know, Lord, a lot of people don't take cross-culture seriously because we're so laid back. The preacher says it how it is. But I pray that uh, I pray that that everybody realizes that we're just doing your will and that we're and that we're following your ways without anything added to it. Just raw ingredients, Lord. Just us. Lord, again, forgive us where we fail you. Carry us through the week. Pour your blessings out on us as we serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs>
cross culture. <coughs> I pray God's blessings on you. I pray that you that you uh, take His word to heart, and I pray peace and joy for the week to come. Amen. Thank you.